All right, so as you can see here, I now have my partitioning software up and running. Before we get started with installation, you're going to want to partition your hard drives. Now what that means is specify storage on your hard drive depending on what operating system you're going to use. So for this tutorial, I'm going to set up my first hard drive to have DOS and Windows 98 on it, and then I'm going to have the second hard drive to have Windows XP. Like I explained in the previous video, I do this because I use DOS for the old DOS applications, Windows 98 for older applications that won't work under Windows XP, and then I have Windows XP for when I want to connect the computer to the internet. So I'm going to go ahead and briefly go through this. So I'm going to go ahead and do manual partitioning. So as you can see, I have my first hard drive here. Uh, the second one we'll do in the next part, but I'll go ahead and click the free space and go ahead and create a partition. Now, the primary, that's going to be your main boot device, and that's definitely what we want it to do. We want it to boot into the DOS hard drive first. So I'm going to go ahead and click Next. Now, I'm going to say Custom Partition Type, and then I'm going to say... 2,000 megabytes. Now the reason for this is for DOS the partition you can use is FAT16 which is file allocation table and the maximum hard drive space that it can support is 2 gigabytes. That's just the limits and I'm gonna go ahead and specify DOS drive as the volume label. Now I'm marking this because when you're going through the installation it can kinda of get confusing with all the partitions you have on your hard drive and instead of it just displaying it properly in the installation you're just gonna see a whole bunch of drives and you're not gonna know which one you wanna put on so I label it for convenience later so as you can see it automatically detected based on the space that I specified that I want to create FAT and that is correct I want it to have that partition type and this is also important align at start of free area that is a requirement of DOS if you when it searches for the boot device the boot information must be at the start of the hard disk else you're gonna have trouble you're gonna have trouble booting into the operating system so as you can see, it already did all the formatting for me. It was instantaneous. That's what I love about this program. If you use FDisk, you can use FDisk, but you have to go through the process of partitioning it and then formatting it. And the format process can take several hours, depending on the space of your hard disk drive. And I don't want to go through that process. I just want it to be formatted and done with. And that's the brilliance of this program. So now I'm going to go ahead and set up for my Windows 98 partition. So I'm going to click the rest of the free space I have and click Create. Now I'm going to select Extended for this and hit Next. Now you actually want it to use all the space and because when you create an extended partition that is the rest of the drive that we're not going to boot into but we want to specify as disk space. Now I'm actually going to use the rest of the drive but I'm going to split it into different sections so as you can see it just specified a new screen where I can add on to that extended partition. So what I'm going to do is partition it for Windows 98. Now I think 10 gigabytes is enough that should be enough um, I think that'll work I'm gonna go ahead and call it Windows 98 drive C custom partition type yes and this I want it to be FAT32 now this can can support I think actually I don't know how much that supports but uh, I'll um, I'll go ahead and include that in a little blip on YouTube but it should specify right here how much that can support but it can definitely support 10 gigabytes so I'm gonna go ahead and click Next align it start a free area yes please 
and it's going to warn you it's only accessible by these by these operating systems now I don't think FAT32 works in Vista and Windows 7 uh, I could be wrong though but I don't think it does I think you have to have NTFS so I'm going to go ahead and proceed I know the warnings and it's going to go ahead and format for me which again should be instantaneous okay and now I'm going to select the rest of my space, hit create, and just use the rest. And I'm going to call this one storage. So now I'm going to store all my programs and music files and all that stuff in the storage direct in the storage drive so that it doesn't mix in with files that are used by the operating system and that can that I know is safe to use with multiple operating systems so I'm gonna go ahead and use the storage I'm gonna go ahead and select next and yes I'm gonna say FAT32 I could say NTFS the only problem is that drive will only be accessible by Windows XP and I don't want that I want it to be seen by all of my operating systems so I'm gonna go ahead and select next and again say yes this is definitely what I want it's gonna go ahead and quickly format it for me again takes five seconds whereas if you actually use Microsoft's format it could take me up to three hours and that's a big waste of time so I'm gonna go ahead and let it do that now again this is a bigger drive so I'm not not too expected that it may take just a, a few seconds to format in this instance but normally it should be fast okay great so as you can see I've used all the space on this hard disk drive now I want to support my other disk drive to use XP oh and it looks like I already partitioned it and formatted it so that's great this one is already ready for use with Windows XP so when you go into the drive again hit primary tell it to use all the space and then select NTFS as your partition type and it'll be ready for Windows XP now there's one last thing I'm gonna need to do and that is to select the disk space that I've allocated for DOS and go ahead and make it bootable so I say advanced set make it bootable and it will go ahead and say chat assistance changed successfully and now I can properly boot into it when my computer starts up so that completes the tutorial on partitioning the hard drive again this uh, this video is not exactly necessary and I definitely run very long on this video but I'm gonna go ahead and restart and see you in the next video and we're gonna be installing DOS so see you next time